Hey yo, we're back for more Monster Prom. Marath, do you know this game? Extra, if you're there, shout out loud and tell me you know this game. Or oh, please, I mean, if you don't. There is only me right now. We will be playing the first um, powerful game. <sighs> okay. Fine, I'll do all this. Ah, spooky high school, the sweetest years of our lives. Back then, we were young and unafraid. Sometimes reckless, sometimes brilliant, sometimes just stupid, but always willing to live life to the fullest. We were on a wild journey to discover who we really were. Who are my... Uh, I feel not blue energy today. We are blue. Apparently, her name is Vicky. Ooh. Oh my god. Yeah, we are winger. <laughs> uh, I really like Vicky, but oh god. Her voice. If I should have been here, I'll, that's unfortunate, but I still have you, Marath. That's all I need to enjoy this game. And we have yet to experience its ultimate challenge, the Monster Prom. I remember it clearly. Six weeks were left. Now as we fantasized about our dream prom dates, we were all scrambling to catch the attention of one of our six most charismatic classmates. Miranda Vanderbilt, 19. A sweet mermaid princess who was as cute as she was genocidal. Damien LeVay, 21. A fearless demon with a taste for destruction and a love for fire. Scott Hall, 21. A well fat beat compensated for his rather small brain with a stupidly large heart. Liam DeLine Court, 400 XCX years. Yeah. Of a hipster vampire whose standoffish demeanor hid that he was truly a lovable dork. Polly Geist, 22. A party ghost with an insatiable hunger for all the wrong things. And Vera Oberlin, 23. <laughs> a mean, self made gorgon with a merciless sense of business. It was clear it's hard to be one of them, but who? Admirate, this is where you come in. Who on earth do you want to pursue? Just pick any one of them and I will try my best. We only had six weeks to choose our prom date. And even more daunting, we only had six weeks to woo them and conquer their heart. But as I already said, we were young and unafraid. And we were ready to start. Welcome to Monster Prom's stupidest pop quiz ever. All minds are rotten, but they are rotten in so many different ways. Worry no more, we are now using our PhD in bullshit to diagnose what kind of serious sickle you are. Monster Prom's stupidest pop quiz ever, TM, will throw you a bunch of absurd questions at you. Will throw a bunch of absurd questions at you, and turn your answers into your character stats. This way, each of you will start by having stats to better reflect your true selves.
Let's start. Oh boy. Marath. Pick one of these six um love interests. Just pick one. Whichever one you feel like. Doesn't even matter. You just do that and let me know. Like right now. You wish you were raised by a pack of wild wolves who also happen to be techno wolves who own some of the most profitable business companies of Silicon Valley. They would kick ass role they would be kick ass role models and wild wolves. Sick. A mysterious soul man who saved me from the streets in order to raise me as a disciple in the ancient ways of Rad DJing. Which I guess is what the picture is. A really progressive marriage with a kicker's venomous sneak and actual fire. I love fire and see no issue being raised with it. I it. My goodness. English? I can't. Speaking of English, I can't. You want to be raised by fire? You see, if I go raised by fire, that's going to give me a certain stat. Uh, I don't want to mess a game this, but I'm going to mess a game this. <laughs> no. Ugh. I want you to pick one of the um love interests. There's um Miranda, Damian, Scott, Liam, Polly, and Vera. And just pick one of those six. And from that, I can try my best and figure out how the heck to get them. Might not get a secret ending. Might get through them. Uh. If I'm not mistaken, this would be fun. This would be... Uh, bull. This probably money. How wealthy? But I'm not sure. Love this music. Alright, talk to me. Don't tell me you're dead. He ain't dead. Alright, cool. I'm getting a glass of water, so quick. You're not holding me back. You're holding... Twitch back. And potentially YouTube. Meta game? Yes, I will meta game. I mean... As meta as you can get, it's a dating sim. The instant formula is usually the more times you see a person, the better chances you have for them. Unless they're a specific type, which we're not going to talk about right now. Three, unless I have a better idea.
All right, I'm off to get that also. I have returned. <laughs> the water is nice and cool. We, you guys got me addicted to EFK Arena. Excuse me. Ah, uh, I mean, yeah, it's an addictive game. But I'm glad you're enjoying yourself, so like, <laughs> have fun, man. My ass, I mean, no. <sighs> Any idea on who you want to chase off to see? Alright, no. If Kieran is an idle game. Yeah, but still. That's not the point. Also, focus on rest. Focus! Pick a person. Doesn't matter who. Any chance to pick none? No, pick one. What are the options? The options are the people we saw beforehand. <laughs> the options are Miranda. Damien, Scott, Liam, Holly, Vera. Just pick one. Just randomly guess. Just pick a name. Just call a name. Because <laughs> if you leave this to me, fucking Holly. Polly. Polly. <laughs> you just pick Polly. Because I, I'm an alcoholic. Oh god. So because that joke was so bad, we're gonna go for fun. I call these right, actually. It's nice. If you could put a curse in your worst enemy, what would you do? 
Girls tend to fall in love with a wonderful person, then be happily married for years before they realize that after all this time, their partner was a wild panther in disguise, and the panther deliciously devours my enemy. Classic. Hey honey, there's something you need to know. Nice. You can't rely on the effectiveness of a curse. I prefer to take care of my enemies the old-fashioned way, by exposing them to unsafe doses of radiation over the course of several years. The curse of always means you have nauseous people at parties who are super into new fire diets. I feel the need to explain them in detail. Well, <laughs> you see. Ah, uh, this is bold. This is smart. What is this again? Charming. We're gonna need charm, so that's good. You find a genie in a bottle. You can ask for whatever you want. What do you ask for? His friendship. Infinite confetti. Him to not be so cliched. A genie in a machine. This is so mainstream. A rainbow that she can eat. I don't ask for anything. I drink the genie from my bottle. From the bottle, I can grant my own wishes. Before asking for anything, you try to negotiate up to the true standard wishes. Okay, um, let's see. Vera, Polly, uh, what's it called? Liam, Scott, uh, Damien, and what the hell is his name? What the hell's her name? Miranda. Polly? No, I mixed them up. Unfortunate. You really want to do a run through with me and extra at the same time? Let's go full head to head. That's going to be such a pain. And also, this is the one that game. And this is the only time. To make tough problems, so we'll just be okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah, Oh, nice. You can do that I mean, same. But I'm not talking about streaming. Yes. I didn't really be streaming. What can you actually do? Look here. Okay, I think she's doing that as well. And we're in. Let's go. Alright. Jin hit the same end. Yo. You're alive, kiddo? What's up? Someone's internet eats it. Wasn't me. The game's back up and running. There's gonna be a bit of lag, but you know. It is what it is. Anyways. We got seven smarts, four boldness, three creativity, seven charm. Seven fun, five money. Uh, first things first, we need to upgrade that fun. That day you didn't reach us, you saw a half hour rave that goes full of crazy. You have no idea how it escalates so much, but at one point you had like 300 people. Someone summons demons from a nightmare dimension. 
the consequences may distort the fabric of reality itself, but who cares? It's a rad party. How am I? I am okay. How is Jin Hit? Jin Hit is celebrating a birthday. I am a robot. Well, rip my voice. I really am. Hey, there we go. Stabilizing now. It should be stabilizing now. Uh, consequences. The sword fabric of reality itself, but who cares? It's a rat party. They gain too fun, which is nice. You're bored and doodling in your notebook when Damien suddenly appears. What the fuck is this doodle? Is that me? Am I cuddling shit? That's with Liam. Bro. What? Dude, if you were looking for a shortcut to the morgue, this is your lucky day. Give me one good reason not to cuddle your face with my fists. Oh no, they discovered your erotic files of them. Can't think of any way to calm down the both of them. But maybe the right answer can calm down one of them. What the fuck is this? It's fuckery, dear Damien, it's art. I present to you, Yami. Don't be silly, you don't want to fight me. You're clearly fighting against your urge for cuddling. <laughs> oh my goodness. How bold am I? Not bold enough. I'm a charm them. And you start tickling Damien. What the fuck? Stop, I will cut you. Damn. I'm not sure if you actually have the balls to face me or if you're just a complete idiot. Maybe both. And you must admit, this piece is relatively good. Look at it, this one obviously knows how we both look shirtless. It's a bit unsettling, yet a bit flattering, right? Shut up, Liam! Why'd you catch Damien taking a glimpse at your masterpiece? Again, to boldness and on creativity. That's gonna help. Nice. <gasps> Polly! They arrive at Polly and Vera's table to find them eating. Wait, both of them? Oh yum yum, I sure do love food and eating. Look at this food go in me. Mmm, yes, this cafeteria sloppy duo truly has a subtle flavor profile. Finally, he notices the cause of this absurdity. A well-dressed businessman sitting at the next table, watching both women intently. <laughs> Why is this game cringe? It's fun. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, I know you like this baby. My eating is realistic and erotic. Be cool, Polly. The man wants to pay us for eating in front of him. Now scream about eating. Is this not what eating is? I forget. But Vera tries to explain eating to Polly. The businessman shyly approaches you and gives you a small ball. Much obliged, friend, he says in a soft voice. Are these two fine ladies your friends? I must confess that I have searched far and wide for a suitable candidate to fulfill my rather unusual fetish. Being a student at a high school, 
with monsters to eat food while I watch for that from a distance. But I find myself unable to choose which of these two fuses to hire. The sneak headed one possesses a soothing grace. Yeah, pay me, motherfucker. Pay me to do a thing I was gonna do anyway. But the translucent one has such passion. I don't even want the money, this is just fucking weird and I love it. <laughs> In your opinion, the businessman finishes. Which would be the wiser choice on my part? The Gorgon, obviously. Look at how many more she's got in her head. The ghost, for sure. I've never seen someone eat so convincingly. Hell yeah. <laughs> the businessman nods softly. You know, you're right. Never before have I believed so fully that someone was actually eating real food. Yep, that's me eating real food with my real mouth and teeth. <laughs> Are you kidding me? That's convincing to you. The food is falling right through her body onto the floor. Don't hate me just because I'm efficient at eating. Don't worry, I hate you for other, more private reasons. What? Sorry, can't hear you. You're too busy eating real food. <laughs> you see up a folly to make her eating even more realistic. She passes her food through her body to you, and you eat it for her. It's pretty hot. <laughs> Ah, uh, what to do? Build that one. Another rave. He spot Juan the small magical casino cat, who seems a bit sad. He explains to you that he's worried people are so used to calling him Juan the small magical casino cat that now everyone identifies him by only his size, magicality, ethnicity, and species. He's more than that. You correct him, you don't see him in such simplistic terms and convenient definitions. It's just that there are around 23 other different pawns in the school, so adding all that to his name is quite necessary. You tell him you'll never forget about, how him, about him and the crazy adventures. He would live together in Monster Prom's prequel, Monster Middle School. You have a great time remembering those crazy stories. You gain too fun. Afterwards, you see Polly and Damien eating some delicious looking cookies. Hey, would you like to buy a cookie to benefit the agents of Chaos? I'm trying to get my Detroit to capitalism badge. All proceeds go directly to the uprising of Kiosk Silver Order, and it's tax deductible. As I was setting fire to a nursing home the other day, I heard a voice echo loudly, so loudly in my head, that my teeth rattled. It told me of an ancient order, and as it was described to me in a thousand voices, blood trickled from my ears. And then the voices gave me a badge of harassment of the elderly. And I earned my first badge for being unable and unwilling to stop partying. My goal is to get enough badges to make a bikini out of, and then wear it and nothing else everywhere forever. My goal is to get enough badges that Polly makes a bikini out of them and wears it and nothing else everywhere forever. <laughs> I wonder what badge we can go for next and what height we should get into to earn it. It was crazy and chaotic being single and partying forever. Destroy the institution of marriage. Chaos is always better with some sensible agony. Replace all the water in the school with swarms of mosquitoes. Ha. Partying is always for this thing. So bold. Yes. Bean. 
I will say that marriage is like such an outdated institution. But think how panicked old people will be if we dismantle it. Yeah, they'll ask us like as if it like matters or something. I'll head to City Hall and torch all the marriage certificates. And I'ma go to all the bridal salons and pour pig's blood in all the dresses. What? Perfect. Man, we're gonna get that disruption society in Norm's badge easy as pie. Badge bikini, here I come. Why do even the simplest plans seem to escalate into arson and blood so, so quickly? Whatever, you gain too fun and one bonus. <laughs> Oh boy. I'm gonna raise my creativity. That day while rehearsing for the class play, it's as if the muses it's as though the muses themselves have descended to give you figurative oral sex. <laughs> Your performance is intense and inspiring. It will be remembered for generations, which is pretty rad by high school play standards. Begin to creativity. Later, you're minding your own business when you see Polly floating down the hallway texting. Just as you're about to approach her. There you are, Polly. I've been following a scent. The scent of betrayal. What are you talking about, buddy? I haven't been pulling any pranks at all lately. Some very unfunny person messed with my sports gear. They put my left sock in my right shoe, and my right sock in my left shoe. Polly, I know what best rules, and you would never do a prank to me. But I think you did this prank to me. <laughs> I smelled you. Um, no, you didn't. Because ghosts don't have a scent. Maybe not to a normal person, but a werewolf can smell anything. And ghosts smell like algebra and global warming. <laughs> Right. Well, if ghosts don't smell, then what am I smelling? Of course ghosts smell, like ecstasy spiked rose wine and Victoria's Seance Laundry. It sure is a mystery. <laughs> Hop in my van and we'll go solve it, Scoop. I mean, Scott. Uh, of course ghost smell. Oh my gosh, yes, my favorite things. Then it was you! Scott, do you have any idea how many ghosts in the school with Victoria's Seance? It's the ultimate lingerie, lingerie boutique. So you're saying it could have been any ghost? Pretty much. But you know what? I would be happy to use my rose wine smell lingerie scented skill set to help you crack the case. Thanks, Polly. You're a good friend. As they walk away, <laughs> arm in arm, Polly looks over her shoulder and mouths to you. It was totally me. <laughs> but Scott seems content. Their friendship is saved, and Polly seems pretty flattered by her choice descriptors. In the end, the strongest smell here is a sweet smell of success. You gain two smarts and one charm. Nice. We are going after Polly with a passion. When you arrive at their table, you find that Polly and Liam aren't eating. They're just taking pictures of their food. Welcome to the we don't need to eat, so we just take the food pics soon, baby. We believe that food, like children, should be seen and not tasted. Yeah, I mean, have you ever tasted a baby? Have you? I don't know, maybe. My weekends are usually kind of a blur, like last Saturday. <laughs> there will be plenty of time to chronicle your sex toys later, Polly. Right now, we need to focus on these food picks. While Liam and Polly were busy bantering, you were busily busy arranging a dope food pick of your own. And now to complete your masterpiece. A food pick, but instead of food, it's just a bottle of whiskey with ketchup on it. A food pick of Liam taking a food pick. So meta. We're going after an alcoholic ghost, people. Come on. Oh my god, yes. I love liquid lunch. Wait, 
But you don't eat or drink. That's why I allowed you on my extremely cool food pick table. How do you even drink liquor? Duh, I'm making a lifeless and drink it, and then I possess them and suck the drunkenness off of them, obviously. I suppose that's not too terribly dissimilar to how I get drunk. But why? Why put ketchup on the whiskey bottle? <laughs> um, so it comes as food? You can't just drink a bottle of whiskey without ketchup on it for lunch. That wouldn't be a meal. <laughs> ah. You can't argue with that logic. Now would you want to, because then how would you just fight getting drunk at lunchtime? <laughs> uh. How are you doing on slots? I... Kinda want that creativity buff. But we need that money. Do you spend some time in the library SPCs playing some good old online poker? <laughs> Gambling seems like a stupid and dangerous decision. But who cares? It's time to pay it off. So fuck it. You gain too money. You see Scott and Polly huddled around a computer wearing their custom Prank Masters t shirts. They're just like regular clothes, but they say Frank Masters on the back. <laughs> when you get up close, you can see how they're looking confused and frustrated. Oh, hell yeah. The internet should be a natural home for the Frank Masters. But a Z! <laughs> but we don't know the first thing about pranking online. How do you even put a whoopee cushion through the internet? And who would sit in it? Kilobytes? Those are exactly the kind of hard-hitting questions we need to be asking, Scott. But I don't have any hard-hitting answers. Help us! Help us prank the internet! Online! <laughs> if you type the numbers 8008 zero, zero, eight, and 5 in order, it looks like boobs. Use ghost powers to punch people in the face through their computer screens. With a shot. Not bold. Tom! That's an awesome idea. Let's start right now. Scott excitedly puts his fist through the computer screen, shattering it. And Winger went me. Winger meant me. I'm a ghost, Scott. You're a werewolf. Oh. My hand hurts. But that's the least of your worries. Agnes Hotel, the mummy librarian, is here to find out who destroyed this computer. You flee for your lives. This is all your fault. You lose two fun and one smart. Uh. <laughs> I tried, I failed. This is a kinky ass game, it is kinda. Also fact, we are pinky ass people. Uh gimme more money. The day you spend some time in the library's PCs, sending malicious spam emails in hopes of seeing other people's real money. It doesn't sound very nice, but who's really the one to blame if they respond to such a blatant scam? You lose some karma, which isn't the start in this game, so who cares? And you gain too money. You see Polly looking unusually depressed. She's usually on hella good drugs at this time of day. So you ask what's wrong. I'm gonna live forever. I was yelling that at a party last night because they were playing that cheesy theme song. You know the one, um, how was it called? Oh yeah, I'm gonna live forever. Duh. But then I realized it's like literally actually true. And forever is like a really, really, really long time, you know? <laughs> what if I run out of stuff to do? What if aliens take over and they ban parking? What if the earth blows up and I have to live in space with dumb, boring space animals? I get bored when the bus takes an extra 10 minutes to arrive. How am I ever gonna stay hyped for eternity? You don't have to, whenever you get tired of existing, just go piss off a priest. Meth. Meth. <gasps> oh, am I not bold enough for that? 
<laughs> What's that bowl of thing? Meth? Just like regular meth? Not even double meth? Or meth plus? Or methapalooza featuring Kanye West? I was bored of regular meth before Breaking Bad was out of its first season. And I've been bored of all the advanced meth since that time I took a bunch of Bolivian ultra meth and dug a tunnel to Australia. But yeah, whatever. Regular meth is fine. Oof, nerd. Sung by Polly's words, he tried to. He decided to try Bolivian ultra meth. He ended up having to invent a time machine to correct that colossal mystique. He lose three smiles and a good chunk of your health. I mean, that's fine. Scott is missing a screw. You're not wrong. <sighs> Alright, I'm trying to comprehend your request. What is there to comprehend? It's really simple, Miranda. Take my cell phone, snap a pic of me if he's planting in my food with my eyes closed and tongue out. But where for? Right here, Miranda. You're about to point out that wherefore means why, but luckily Polly elaborates on her own, so you don't have to look like a fucking know it all. It's a new meme, Miranda. It's like planking or dabbing. It's called food poisoning, and it's dope AF. Do you have any cool trends in your kingdom? Hmm, I suppose we do. Oh, we have a fun trend called Reveal Your Rulers. That's where you show nothing but the utmost devotion to the royal family. If you're good at it, you get a lot of likes on social media and also not executed. Do you ever listen to yourself when you speak? I bet you know some pretty cool trends, don't you, Winger? Heck yeah, you do, don't you? I surely do. It's entitled Silverware Wear. That's where you take your most expensive cutlery and dress it in very fancy tiny outfits. Yep, it's called dying. Yes. <laughs> dying is my fucking fave. I mean, listen, the first time I did it, I was like, hmm, okay, now I don't get to be alive anymore. But then when all the cool ghost stuff kicked in, I was like, OMG, dying is awesome. Everyone should die. I'm not sure if I would be into this dying trend, but I do know that Daddy's reign helps many peasants achieve this mean. So it's nice to know that they're, be that they're becoming super popular on social media in the process. Remind me not to ever hang out in Miranda's kingdom on break. But hey, Winger, maybe you and I could hang out and do some dying together. Yay, maybe? Yeah, yay. <laughs> can't, can't get money. I need to push charm. That DN epic job role match takes place. Everything seems lost, but you deliver an inspirational speech that fuels your teen spirit, leading to a spectacular comeback. You're clearly a natural born leader. You gain two charm. Heck yeah. It's only been one match and you can see that Polly and Liam are already bored. Marvelous my dear student athletes. This match was great. But I know the remaining 29 matches will be even greater. Tend to get that blood pumping and his heart rate's going. Ugh, why do we have to do this? I don't even have blood or a heart. Also, I hate cleaning the balls. Most of the time. You're right, Paulina. Physical exertion is for lesser beings with no conception of how to properly while away the hours. I'm not sure what you're seeing unless you mean you're down to help me skip this bummer of a class. Indeed. But we need to do so cleverly, so as not to get detention. Let's show us the prize party for coach, like right now. Fake moustaches, they're always the answer. Oh my goodness. Yes! Thank goodness. So 
Sorry, Coach, we can't play anymore. What? Why? Because this is a surprise party for you. Fortunately, Polly always carries some party ones and lots of confetti with her. Surprise! Kids, really? Why? Because today is best coach in the world day. Me? Me? The best coach in the world? Only because I have the greatest students in the world. I'm so happy. Let's call it a day and enjoy this. <laughs> because in the end, joy is the main muscle of the heart. Um, isn't the heart the main muscle of the heart? <laughs> no, the heart is like the captain of the muscles of the heart. Or are muscles like the joy of the body? I can't remember. <laughs> Whatever, coach. <laughs> Let's party. I have the perfect thing for this. No, party. Coke is not the perfect thing for this. Even with no coke, you have a great time together. And you get to skip gym. Happy International Surprise Party Day. You get two charm and one fun. <laughs> <laughs> our stats are all decent except creativity which i can buff after this i just want to get this money oh right um Kick start, a start kicker, something something, deceiving people, something something, get too money, yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> You're hanging out with Polly afterwards, watching some porn like you always do in the library. <laughs> when you suddenly notice Miranda standing right behind you, who knows how long she's been there. Hello good friends, what are you doing? Um, uh, nothing, nothing at all. It doesn't seem to be nothing. This man seems to be kind of sharing his marmalade with a giant skunk. I explained this at once. Well, it's simple, you know, it's really just a kind of, well, it's a cooking show. <laughs> yes, cooking. What do you see, Miranda, when a man and a giant skunk love each other very, very much? <laughs> oh, good day. Oh, boy. Oh, what is this? Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh Cook your something power in this game. I mean maybe. Okay, I actually want help with this one. I have no freaking clue. <laughs> like I'm pretty sure it's gonna turn out bad, but what oh, use? Oh my goodness. Yes, it my water. Cooking, totally. Alright, cool. It's... Yeah, not creative. A cooking show. Disgusting. What? Cooking is for four people. It's obscene. I can't believe I'm even watching this. No, wait, Miranda. It's okay. It's not cooking. It's porn. It's porn. It's, it's too late. Miranda is gone. And the D's porn watching is ruined. Oh, no. You lose two charm and one smarts. Unfortunate. Ah, uh, damn. It's fine, we'll make it back up. Oop, there we go. You arrive at your chosen table to find Damien dejectedly hefting a ball of mashed potatoes, while Polly pa sadly passes her hand through the scene. Seriously, what do we have to do to get a food fight started in this cafeteria?
I honestly do not know. I tried throwing potatoes at, at people and yelling food fight, but I think everyone is too scared of me to fight back. And I can't throw any food because my stupid ghost hands. Plates, mirrors, antique furniture, sure, but not food. <laughs> it's gotta be a way to provoke a food war. My dad's always telling me to be more political. <laughs> but we're not political. Your strength is hitting things and my strength is being unbelievably hot all the time. Unbelievably hot. That's it. We set the cafeteria on fire. Wait, no, that's not a solution. That's just arson. Why do I always jump straight to arson? <laughs> it's hard to watch them struggle through this by themselves. So you step in with an idea of your own. Was a force with scarce resources. See everybody's food and put it in a pile. That ought to do it. Hey Paul, you know the Greeks fought a whole war with the hell in the choice for us. We just need you to help to get through kidnapped by Trojans. Oh my god. Uh <laughs> I like where your head is, but I'm not super into being kidnapped and shit. What if we skip some steps and get <laughs> with some good old flashing? Paul he floats up onto the table and in a practice motion whips the top off. <laughs> to the victor! This is a high school cafeteria. Polly's rash action upsets the roiling cauldron of hormones, sets it on fire, and tap dances on the wires, on the ruins. Soon the air is thick with sausage and gravy. Potato crisps fly everywhere like flavored shrapnel. <laughs> Polly puts the shirt back on now that everyone's too busy fighting to remember what they're fighting about. Looks like mine really would have tits that launched a thousand chips. The view you just got makes that pun with it. <laughs> Alright, cool. Let's build some creativity. While we're here seeing for the class play, you totally forgot your lines. It's terrible. But you don't let that get you down, you start improvising all your lines. And it's marvelous, somehow it enhances the pathos of the play in unexpected ways. And that's seeing something since half of your improvisation is a rap battle against your inner fears. You gain to creativity. You're chilling with Polly after rehearsal when a door flies off its hinges and the slave busts in. Yo loser, I'm about to face some major boss in the dungeon I'm working on. And I need potions. Do you mean drugs? I have tons of those. Most of them are met though, so... No, I mean potions. Those enticingly shaped glass bosses full of colored liquid. Oh, these are just for my costume. They're not really... Holding on to me, huh? Well, I'll show you. To the hero go the spoils. The slayer grabs one of Polly's potions and chugs it. Now if this potion really works, I'll pay good money for the rest. How's that sound? It works, it sounds great, except that the potion is really just a bottle of colored water. <laughs> That's no reason not to scam the slayer though. Quick, made the potion seem like it did something. Turn her into a cucumber, punch her in the stomach. Uh, I will turn her into a cucumber. And that really works. <laughs> Good thing you always keep that cucumber spell prepared for emergencies. Whoa, she turned into a tiny green wang. I didn't know my potions did that. That's so responsible. I'm going to drink all of them. But before Polly can do anything stupid, and before you can make a salad of the Slayer, she turns back. Ah, I'm free now. Ah, <laughs> yeah, sorry. My potion is dumb cool stuff instead of weird combat stuff. Are you kidding? The boss I'm fighting is weak against e-combos. 
This is perfect. I'll take everything you've got. You sell the slayer all the bosses of green water for plus two money. And <laughs> when she runs out of money, she gives you a one charm too. Hell yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh god, this is awesome. What do I want? I want some boldness. I want some creativity. That day, while you're listening to the class play, you do a terrific job at acting. You act so hard that some of your classmates in the audience throw roses at you. Seven roses to be exact. Damn, roses aren't a bad currency or start in this game. Anyway, you check your computer app to see if it could translate into something a bit more useful. Hmm, it seems like seven roses equals two creativity points. Sweet, you gain two creativity. You catch Polly floating up on the catwalk, muttering to herself. She perks up when she sees you. Oh man, perfect. I need some advice. Scott was nervous about signing up for the talent show, so I promised him I'd sign up too. But I don't know what to do. Sex having and drug doing a band on stage after my act last year, and I can't think of any other talents. <laughs> I don't want to back up, but I don't want to do something lame just cause, you know. What would you do if you and me? Besides, look through walls of naked people because the Well, since you can't die, you could do some awesome suicide medley. Um, hello, twerking. Um, uh, <laughs> all my... Ooh, my creativity is gone. Damn. Uh, were you even at the town show last year? Elvira, you know the other hot girls girl now, yeah? Did that exact thing for the last show. Except Elvira wasn't a ghost last year. She was a goblin, so she died for real. Everybody agreed it was super hot, no pun intended. Okay, pun intended. So we got together and did a dark ritual to raise her as a ghost. So um, no, I'm not gonna copy Elvira's act. Because like, there are two things every ghost girl knows. One, never accept a background from a tentacle monster. And two, real that is always be expected. that. How did you forget about Elvira? Weren't you, were you on drugs? He lose two smarts and one creativity. That's fine. Ah, come on, Polly. Trigger properly. Liam and Polly aren't alone at their table. They're flanked by two beefy hobgoblins in school security uniforms. What do these two have? What, do these two have bodyguards now? They aren't bodyguards. They're food guards. <laughs> Principal Giant Spider found out we weren't eating during lunch. So he assigned guards to us because he thinks we have an eating disorder. And we do have an eating disorder. It's called being dead. How? Except it's not eating disorder. It's an identity and a lifestyle. That style. Whatever. The point is that they won't let us leave until we be seeing our food. Which will be never. And I have a meeting of the Smug Superiority Club to conduct next period. Can't be late. If you could just figure out a way around these food guards for us, I'd be super grateful. Like in a sexy way. Well, you can't say no to that. Time to enact your finish the clever plan. Dump all of Polly's food into Liam's plate. Dump all of Liam's food into Polly's plate. Welp. Oh. 
<laughs> With all the deafness and the raw sexuality of Indiana Jones, he emptied Polly's food into Liam's plate and his lap. <laughs> Ah, stop that. It's too much food. I can't even artfully arrange it for a decent food pick. Meanwhile, I seem to have eaten 100% of the food on my plate. No problem. Nothing to see there. Luckily for you and Polly, the hobgoblins are complete idiots with no object permanence. They instantly believe Polly's lie. You traitors, I thought we were in this together. You thought? That was your first mistake. I stay high all the time, so I never think. <laughs> you and Polly ditch the cafeteria. And then ditch school. And then do so many drugs you end up in a ditch. So irresponsible. <laughs> Hmm. Where we at? Where we at? Let's get a little more creativity going. That day while rehearsing for the class play, you can't help but feel like you're not as good as the role requires you to be. There doesn't seem to be any ordinary way of getting yourself there, but there might be an extraordinary way. You summon the devil, one of many, and make a deal to enhance your creativity just a bit. You gain to creativity. You also lose negative three years of life as the end of your deal. But who cares? They weren't happening in game anyways. You go up to the light booth to see how Polly and Damien are doing. Lame, that's all we're doing. If I'd known they'd stick me up here, guess because I missed auditions to go to that monster truck rally. I still would have gone to that monster truck rally. But I would have gotten like nine more fights while I was there. But I have to be on so many cool drugs during casting. I thought the lights were butterflies and I wanted to play with them. That's all in the past now. As long as we're here, I guess it was. I guess we better make the best of it. Blair. By fucking with Liam. But he's so hard to mess with. He's like really good at acting. Come on. Between the three of us, I'm sure there's something we can do to make him forget his lines. We write the whole play, but just Liam's lines. Rocket launcher. We write the whole play. <laughs> yes, this is it. I have enough creativity to do anything now. The three of you huddle around the script and make some changes. Change his name to Vinegar Silly Tits. Ooh, making him poop his pants. Making him poop his pants. <coughs> Ow. When you're done, Liam's character is going from a brief swashbuckler to an incontinent Yamsi's one. Oh my god. You switch out everyone's scripts and wait for Liam's big entrance. He delivers an absolutely perfect performance of the old vision of the script. At the end of the show, the director takes him aside and asks him why he doesn't he didn't poop out his pants. You, Damien, and Polly are gonna have some swamps tomorrow from all the high fives you're doing. You gain two fun and one smart. Nice, we got that fun. And that's awesome. What do I want? I could go for bullness. That day, you skip class and just hang out in the bathrooms because you respect no authority. I guess some people just want to watch the world burn by skipping class and hanging out in bathrooms. 
You give zero shits, but you gain two bullets. Oh my god, did you hear? They finally invented a tattoo gun that works on ghosts. I'm totally gonna go get one as soon as school lets up. Oh shit, we should definitely get matching tattoos, you wanna? <coughs> How? My throat is so dry. Of course you do. What are you responsible? The important question is, what kind of tattoo do you want to get? The entire text of the ne Necronomicon. You be the first half, I'll be the second half. Knuckle toss. You get par T par, and I'll get T par par. T par T. Put the knuckles together. And you know what that spells? Sex. <laughs> 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 you look blankly at Polly. What? That's what it spells, right? I mean, I could be wrong. I never see a group of letters. I always assume they just spell sex or LSD. And a knuckle tattoo is obviously longer than three lassos. So sex it is. You start to explain that sex is the same length as LSD, but probably Polly presses a finger to your lips. Shush, my little dumplet. If you play your cards right, I'll show you just how long sex can really be. She does show you. It turns out that it can be as long as you want if you just keep adding X to the end. <laughs> you gain too far and more creativity. I care. This thing, man, you can totally sit for us. I just hope you didn't bring a gun to a bazooka fight. Yeah, we're sharing off all best flasks. We're not the best flask exactly, but the best contents. Good God, a literal actual flask of alcohol openly allowed in the school cafeteria. And there are there no rules? Apparently not, because Polly starts setting a series of flasks on the table. Okay, so this is beer, my WC wine, whiskey, ethyl, alcohol, the soul of an infant. Ha, weak. This is radioactive absinthe. Absinthe? This is fire, and this is literal poor light traces. Okay, but this one has another smaller flask inside. It is the ultimate flask. <laughs> I love this game too much. They could probably go on like this for goddamn ever. Maybe you can cut it, cut in with the craziest thing of all. But think carefully about whom you want to impress with your fast contents. Get ready for the most hardcore badass thing. This class contains an ancient genie that grants you three wishes. But I'm drinking, but I'm totally drinking it because I don't give a fuck. I I grab my own wishes. Wanna get a dope party started? This flask has ultra whiskey, which you can only get when you get two bottles of the best purest whiskey and make them meet. <laughs> yes, because whiskey, whiskey porn is what I want to see. Heck yeah, heck yeah, heck yeah, let's rage. I've always wanted to make ultra whiskey, but I cannot get my whiskey bottles to fuck. I tried everything, mood lighting, such a music, chainsaws, you know, all that cliche romantic stuff. But it seemed nigh impossible to get them to make sweet whiskey love. I almost started to think inanimate objects can't have sex, but I have had lots of sex with inanimate objects, so that's just silly. If you can make whiskey x whiskey turn into ultra whiskey, you should definitely apply that principle all over the damn place. Two cars to make a limousine and all your iPhones to become the iPhone XXX. The most advanced update possible, though. I might grieve and I'm not sure I should know to get a pair of designer shoes. Can't wait to create dope for fun. 
super soft and the wool can even handle probably well the wool probably doesn't need to worry about handling it because there's no way you can pull that insanity off but the evil plants are poly <laughs> Last one. Oh, no shot, people. Let's get the last boldness in. Lock it off. That day you skip class and just hang out in the bathrooms because you respect no authority. On the way there, you run to Mamini. Mamimi? Mami, the only girl. She offers you some of her weird Japanese energy drink. You take a sip. It tastes crazy as hell. You need to check the contents of the ship. Guarana seed extract, benzoic acid, 50 milligrams of caffeine, and 100 milligrams of boldness? Well, it wasn't bad at all. You gained two boldness, time with Mimi, and proceeds to the bathrooms. Of course, no trip to the bathroom would be complete without running into a group of your classmates doing something stupid. Uh, Damien, you're the worst. I know, right? She means that in a bad way. Do you really have to set fire to our entire deck of cards? I don't know. Did the deck of cards have to keep dealing with shitty hands? Not necessarily. That's not how probability works. Well, then I guess I didn't necessarily need to set it on fire. But since when has that stopped me? Well, now you stopped us all from playing poker. Now what are we gonna bet on? Mama needs a new pair of shoes. Yes, and I derive an almost sexual pleasure from taking your money. So what's the new game? Ooh, ooh, you know the perfect poker alternative. Russian roulette. The stock market. Uh, Russian roulette. Oh yeah, why did I think of that? That used to be my favorite game before I died. Wait. All in. Polly pulls out an antique revolver out of nowhere, spins the cylinder, points it out her head, and pulls the trigger five times into the fires. The bullet goes through her intangible head, bounces off the ceiling, and embeds itself in the mirror right next to all the other bullet holes. I guess Vera and I split the money? Dang, I always lose that Russian roulette. Let's play again, I'll go first. How you ever died is a mystery to me. Hey, yeah, me too. He decided to get out of the bathroom to avoid any further ricochet. From the gunshots that went behind you, it seems your friends are all delighted with your suggestion. He gained too fun on one spot. Oh my god. <gasps> we now can go to prom by ourselves. Mirth, this is what you wanted. You wanted another option, and this is what is there. But also, I'm not picking that because no. <laughs> yeah. Polly, we're doing this. You finally pluck up your courage and ask your beloved to go to the monster prom with you. Prom? Yes. It'll be a night to remember, boo. Well, it would be a night to remember if I wasn't going to get so drunk and high that I wouldn't like to remember anything the after. But that's why God invented selfies. Prom was wild. But still not wild enough for the likes of you. So close to dawn, he decided to keep partying by improvising a dope after party at an abandoned manor house. He partied with a group of classmates for days. Over time, people came and left. Some even died from too much partying. At one point, one of the deities of partying hard appeared, some by the deaths of your peers, which turned out to be a sacrifice for him. 
He declared you his heralds and bestowed upon you supernatural rod posse powers, like endless confetti, whatever that means. Then he joined you and you all kept partying for another entire week. Because that's how you roll. <laughs> Got 12 new events, 13 new outcomes. Winger, most likely to make Pluto a plant again. All these quotes always be loud like love. Nice. Now for the ending theme that I need to talk over so it doesn't get copyright struck when it hits YouTube because you know this game is so amazing. Like look at all these people. Oh yeah. Um uh I belong. Do six weeks and maybe the most epic and absurd weeks of our lives. After the month's prom, we kept on living our lives, falling in love, battling for friendship, and learning about who we were and who we could be. And you know what? Like it always does, life happened, and it was wonderful. To this day, it seems Miranda still isn't sure about what exactly porn is. Polly took a summer job as a ghost of Christmas presents. She spent most of her time partying. There was almost no work because, you know, it was summer. Scott became an athlete. Not so long ago, he won a prestigious national award for being the best at doing sports. For those six weeks, the monster problem seemed larger than life. And then it was gone, just like that. The battle for monster problem might have ended then. But there were plenty of battles left in that war called youth. Once again, we were young and unafraid. And we were ready to start. Okay, now I need to talk because this is a really nice song and I wish you could hear it. But I just send, I just have to send you the link. I'll probably drop it in chat. But you know, it's a really good song and I really wish I could just let it hear it. But like, YouTube is going to be a bitch if I just let you play it. And oh my goodness, I don't know why. 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 It's so good, you know. It's just... We really done what we had, son. He's on in my head. He's done and up that singing. Sha la 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 la. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I panicked and decided to sing this song because I know it'll cover it. Because I did that before, so yes, yes, yes. This is an amazing track. Look at these Polaroids. Hey, look at that pool pick. Look at that amazing thing. Everything's amazing. I just wish I could be here. I, I just wish I could spend more time with my friends. I just wish I could play this game with you guys for real. This is so nice. Thank you so much for coming. Yeah, yeah, yada. Hey, cycling. Yada, 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 yada. Uh, is it enough time? I don't think it's enough time yet. What if I told you that the world was gonna end? And you have 15 minutes to spend with me or a friend. I guess we don't even need to use the phone. I need no answer, I'm just spending it alone. Okay, cool. You're full of surprises, look at that. Nice. Yeah, copyright is OP. <laughs> copyright is so freaking OP. <laughs> <laughs> like it's not gonna do anything the most it'll do is just like uh it'll just uh make that video ineligible to get monetized if i just leave it in by itself so most of the time what i do is i'll just mute this action that's why doki doki's ending the vod had no sound that's why the first stream of this had that sound Covers it less than censorship. I mean, <laughs> it works. It really does work. Unlocked, you have five new images in the gallery. Awesome. So let's check that gallery real quick. Polaroids! Didn't get a new ending, technically. 
I think I got a custom full array though. Yeah. Yeah, full of surprises, which is nice. Heck yeah. What is in more odds that I found? Oh, it's probably some. What do you call it? Uh, concept art. And I was still a bit like that. There it is. Brian event concepts. Brian screen. Huh. And then early concepts. Cool. More fun art. Look at that, Damien. I should just stalk everyone in this. Okay, cool. We came, we saw. So now I will give you all the option. Do we want to do this again? Or is that just like it for night? And the option is entirely yours. I just want to know if you enjoyed the game or not, basically. You have break this week? <laughs> what do you mean you have break this week? Like spring break? Yeah, I'm very much from Asian. Like winter break?
Round two. Awesome. <laughs> How even? Okay. We're gonna start around two. And I will for game. We got a poly and so we got the poly right. Huh, surprising. We see be day. Okay. The birthday girl or Asher or some Ashley. Yeah, well, one of you two. Decide on which one of these six we're chasing after this round. And I am by no means of like um against chasing after Polly again. Because there's a specific route I'm trying to get with her. <laughs> that I was trying to build towards and it just didn't happen because RNG. So if she's the girl of choice, just say the word not there. I'm gonna get some water and I'll be back in a few minutes.
Yo. I have returned. Did you miss me? Did I chase the mermaid already? I did not. I have not. I don't remember chasing her. <laughs> Mantle to yes. Am I okay? Yeah, I'm okay. Went for water. Am I dead? Only on the inside. No, only partially on the inside. You want ice cream? Seam. Yeah, I've been here until I was blogging. Sorry, Extra. Make noise in the kitchen. Yeah. Seam. I wish my glasses had lights. That would be a flex. Alright, so did you guys decide on who we're chasing this time? But they go. Marath apparently wants us to chase the mermaid. Who's the good giggle wants? And extra, if you have an opinion, chime in as well. You may be a tiebreaker. Tell me why I almost fell off my bed. Uh, because you're wandering around in the dark. Bova ball. Fair enough. Just making sure, so can I get an answer? Does not know. <laughs> oh yes, yeah, the stupidest talk with her. That's amazing. Ooh, demon boy. We need a tiebreaker indeed. Which is the coolest mythological creature? Demon boy, we need a gear ship to seal. I mean, fear. The coolest mythological creature, a sphinx who super turned to, turn to up and ready to party. And she wraps all her riddles. She still kills you if you don't answer them correctly. But she wraps the riddles. This weird creature I drew when I was six, and which is clearly super derivative from other mythological creatures. But it's super cool and it's my OC and my spirit animal, okay? The invisible hand of the free market. What? Uh <laughs> I have no idea what to do here. Not free markets. Um Let's go to the rapper. Fun, gotcha. You change your boot to the factory. I can't believe this. You wish you were raised by we read. Oh no. We got this one, we got that one. A really progressive marriage between a kick ass villain the sneak and actual fire. Oh wait, did we actually have that one already? The amino would love that, it's bold. The world will end tomorrow, what do you do today? Parties if there's no tomorrow, so who cares? 100 push-ups, no no no, 200 push-ups. Nobody ends the world but me, I'll end the world today. They always tell you the world is ending, I'll profit on other people's hysteria. I'll finish my novel, whoever comes after the end should know my legacy. 
It's okay we invented the apocalypse to take care of the overpopulation of commoners. <laughs> okay. So, Polly, Scott, Damien, Vera, Liam, and Miranda. So, seeing as we're going that total gear out. Yeah, I call that completely right. We're chasing this. We're chasing this demon boy. I should have been broken, but I can probably see what I'm doing. I'm gonna do for myself. <laughs> Push up and. Oh my god, the loading stream from hell is done. So we have some summon smart, some boldness, trick creativity for a charm, summon fun, and five months. Alright. Sod will just buff that boldness real quick. That day you skip class and just hang out in the bathrooms because you're expecting no authority. I guess some people just want to watch the will boom by skipping class and hanging out in the bathrooms. He gives zero shits but gain two boldness. Later you come across Damien and Vera in the hallway, nonchalantly holding a locker shut with all their strengths. The locker has a sign that says nothing to see here and is screaming. Shut the hell up you! Adorable fluffy little fluffy. You see you were spending quality time with our new pet, isn't that right Damien? From somewhere within the locker, you hear my parents will appear anything before Damien kicks the door. Yeah, that's right, adorable, quiet, fluffy, who's going to stay quiet if he knows what's good for him. You know, I really don't have a great track record with pets. I had some mice half a day, but my he ate all of them. Oh my god. It sure would be a shame if our new pet died before we could receive the true joy of pet ownership. Yes, exactly, the sweet, sweet, bank account filling, filter rich, making joy of pet ownership. Oh my god. Surely you have lots of knowledge about pet care. Why not share some of it? You know, pets love hardcore death metal all the time to drown out their noises. If you love something, set it free, just implant a tracking device first. And I'm feeling that that metal. Hell yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Perfect, let's crank that shit. Damien pulls out his eyeball and she and blasts some truly vulgar Scottish girl. Quickly the cries of no help, no please, just help me, 
are drowned out by the sounds of a Yeti playing the electronic pickaxe. The electric pickaxe. This is the perfect cover of comforting sound for sweet little Fluffy to be lulled to sleep by. Yeah. <laughs> Now, do I want to order these Kumura Dragon skin shoes in a 4 inch or 6 inch heel? Oh, the joy of knowing that crime truly does pay. They gain two boldness and one fun. Alright. You find Damien and Vera contemplating a large, huge slab on un its Unidentifiable prime meat. Alright, Damien. I know we've had our share of disagreements during this convoluted poaching expedition. Like when he told me not to bring all my knives. But I trust we can now put our differences behind us and enjoy the fruits of our labors. You mean the meats of our labors? Yes. Together we will enjoy this raw bloody cut of meat as a symbol of our. Wait, wrong buddy. You mean you're not even gonna try using fire on it? Of course I use fire. I specifically instructed the chef to prepare this meat while glancing briefly at a little soul. Did the fire ever, you know, touch the meat? What would be the point of that? A cut this fine can only be eaten ultra rare. Like hell it can. You, you wait here while I get my culinary flamethrower. Damien, please, let's be reasonable about this. What is reasonable? If you can't come to an agreement, let's appeal to an arbitrary third party. Winger will surely make the intelligent choice for us, isn't that right? I know my intelligence is kinda low. My wood, the stick is too cooked already. Rub some ice in the indulge in blood, quick. The only correct way to enjoy a stick is after its shot remains have been retrieved from a burning building. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> that and sounds of screaming people fleeing a burning building. But roasting totally destroys the flavor of done talking fire time now. As you flee screaming from the burning building, you find Damien right beside you. He takes your hand and smiles. It almost makes it to a degree burns and massive property damage with it. Huh. What do I want to build? Might need that creativity later, might need that charm later. Bonus is at a good level. Let's start with... Meat indeed. Ah, uh, what am I doing? I want creativity. Creativity is blocked. I need charm. Alright. That D and Epic Dodge all match takes place. Everything seems lost, but you deliver an inspirational speech. Yada yada yada. Spectacular comeback. Yada yada yada. Clearly not your born leader, right? To charm. Suddenly a chill around the street was if the very fabric of reality is in danger. Scanning your surroundings to quickly discover the reason for the feeling. Polly and Damien are together and they're bored. Damien, Damien, Damien. What? I must have fallen asleep for a second because nothing's on fire. I know, right? I think crazy has happened in the last 47 minutes and I'm dead. I mean, I am literally actually dead, but I also am dead because of how bored I am. What if we just. Oh, fuck. I'm just, I can't even think of something to do to not be bored. No, help us, somebody, please, cause a sexy problem. 
break the seven seas and release Karlak Thu, the will fucker. Send in the party G goblins. I think I have enough spots for that. Nice. He's in a kiss towards someone was stupid enough to give you. Shots of the world separating the world fucker from all worlds. He emerges onto this morsel plane with a noise like a million throats being slit at once. Wreathed in bloody vapor. These are the end times that the ancient poets forlornly prophesized. The end, the realm will rot like the maggot riddled corpse of this. Oh, sick, it's the world fucker. Come to fuck the world. Yes. Go, hey, world fucker. Wanna party? Kralakdul speaks with a voice like a snake eating itself. He says, Hell yes. <laughs> you all head off to party all night, leaving a trail of flaming wreckage in your week. The world is doomed, but at least it's not boring. You gain two fun and one boldness. Nice. I almost succeeded the fun problem. Alright. Uh, this creativity is atrocious. The deal where you're hosting for the class place, so the muses themselves had descended to give you a figurative blowjob. <laughs> Your performance is intense and inspiring. It will be remembered for generations, which is pretty rad by high school play standards. Speaking to creativity. God damn, I signed up for this play because I knew I could fill out these costumes like a goddess. But now I'm starting to think, I might actually hate acting. Which is weird because I love lying. And that's your fucking problem, Vera. You shouldn't be lying. You should be living truthfully under imaginary circumstances, duh. What, you think I don't know about acting? I have hidden depths, you know. My life isn't all punching and arson. It's just mostly those things. Look, you're an assassin, right? You just need to think of some of the best reason to assassinate someone. Ooh, you know exactly what that is. Because nobody's paying you not to. No reason at all. Everyone is rotten and deserves to die. Wow, you're right. Everyone is awful. I'm just thinking about all the people I wish could die. There's so many. Every dude who's ever sent me dick pics. Crazy moss in the way bear janitor when he busts me for breaking rules. Anyone who wears socks with sandals. <laughs> Oh yeah, fuck those people. Channel all that sweet, sweet hatred and maybe we won't totally bomb up there. Attempt to run lines of feeling. And murder! Fuck yeah, murder! I'll go get my acting knives. But not really, right? You hope not really. You gain two boldness and one creativity. And boldness is skyrocketing. Damien, what are you doing over here? The surprise is going to add up. Cool. You sit down to enjoy a nice normal meal at the spooky high cafeteria, as usual. Lol, JK, something fucked up is always going on here, and today is no different. Oh, hello, Winger. Did you want to come sit with us and our imaginary friend? No one else is here. The imaginary friend roars and the whole cafeteria shakes. Okay, Winger, you have some smarts. You're probably gonna figure this out pretty quickly. Why do we have a wild beast under our table? Why don't you take a guess? He's asking you to guess because you totally forgot our plan. Scott, no we didn't. Shut up. <laughs> we were gonna teach it the piano or maybe the saxophone. I lost my notes. No worries, no notes needed. You know exactly what they should be doing with this wild beast. The wild beast should be the new school mascot. Put him in a sports jersey and let's rock. Go team! It's obvious you brought such a beast to the kitchen. To turn it into the next Monster Chef champion. So you can split the big Monster Chef cast prize. You know what? I I kind of like the money but the Monster Chef thing. What a kick ass idea. Which is obviously ours. You're right. That was our idea. Hurry, we're geniuses. 
And that's just what we need here. Training montage music. Suddenly, you saw the training montage in which the three of you try to teach cooking to the wild beast. You suck at it since you're not big chefs yourselves. And also because it's a wild beast and it keeps on devouring people and wreaking havoc. But it is quite an epic training montage. Afterwards, you're all sitting excited in front of a portable TV. The Monster Chef show is about to start. You're holding cute supportive signs and you even got yourself a custom made shirt of the wild beast. Whoa, this is the big day. Also, how is it that we trained the wild beast and it's now on the show if it's still noon? The cafeteria time hasn't even ended. Shh, Scott, time works in mysterious ways when it comes to training montages. Okay, boys, I only hope it isn't a souffle challenge. We know the wild boost beast isn't good at souffles. The wild beast isn't good at anything aside from devouring people and wreaking havoc. Be quiet, they watch the show. The challenge is Beef Wellington. Fuck yeah, no souffle. Not so surprisingly, once the challenge begins, the wild beast just starts to devour the other contestants and destroys the show's set. You see the church. <laughs> You see the judges screaming, who the fuck let a wild beast enter the competition? The wild beast is disqualified. Well, I guess that's it. We might not have won the cash prize, but we won the most valuable of prizes. The prize of laughing at a wild beast fucking up everything on the Monster Chef's TV set. Which is a memory we will cherish forever. Is Damien ready to cherish memories that include you? Wow. <laughs> Huh. Everything's coming up nice. Uh, let's buff this smart. Oh, we can't buff smart, but. Uh, let's buff creativity. Is that the, the ultimate nickname thing? Yeah, no. When I show up with a pack of playing cards, no one's gonna be scared until they're dead. Nice. You're doing your thing when a wild Damien suddenly appears. Hey you, you look like you have nothing better to do. I need a mom for the prom because walking is losers. And also because I lost my driver's license after I drove my motorcycle through another Sunday school picnic. But I won't take just any lame ass mods. I need the best creature in hell. So let's brainstorm. If you don't answer in the next 10 seconds, I'm putting a bit in your mouth and riding you. We're talking hell yeah, so a goat, but not just any goat, a goat that's a real asshole. What about that giant gelatinous 50 nose creature at your house that's just spiling its corpses? Oh, you mean a cradle of filth? That's not a creature, that's what we used to replace a swimming pool. Though I could put it on wheels and arrive on it. <laughs> yeah. Of course. I have to inform the superintendent not to bring anything fallible. Or no wait, everything flammable. You make a mental note to bring a gas mask to prom. And the fact that you're going despite the danger means you gain plus three bonus. Oh god, our bonus is through the roof. It's only week three. How are we doing this so well? Spirit, feed it. Daddy, if you get lines, but I start improving, right? You see, Damien beats him the piss out of a goblin like he always does when he's depressed. You go over and ask him what's up. It's this whole here to ear to the throne of hell thing. It's really bumming me out. I hate being a prince of hell, and I'm gonna hate being a king of hell even more. I mean, how am I supposed to rebel against authority when I am the authority? Ugh, not even beating the piss out of this goblin is cheering me up. Damien continues to beat the piss out of the goblin, but it's clear. His heart clearly isn't in. 
I mean, is there anything a rod I can do as a camp help? Let's hear all the anything. You forget some about the ultimate way to fight Satoru's total war. Kings of Harms, and I definitely join yours. Uh, I need charm for this. Let's go with war. Hell yeah. Oh yeah, war. I totally forgot about war. Probably because my dad's is just lame asses. They keep going on about what's the word? Diplomacy? 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 Am I seeing that right? Diplomacy. Whatever. I'll have it taken out of the dictionary when I'm king. Suck on that, Webster. Leave me so excited he even starts strangling that goblin. It sends you a massage coupon as a thank you. You gain two smiles and a boldness. Good boy, all right. Good boy, all right. You find Damien and Vera, hunch of a scale model of Spooky National Bank, made of milk cartons, lunch trays, and ketchup packets. Alright, we'll go in through the side entrance, disable the alarms with an EMP and blow the safe. Why don't we just blow up the side entrance, blow up the alarms and blow up the safe? Because you only have so much C4, Damien. That sounds like a personal problem. What's this thing? Damien points at a kosher dill pickle in front of the board labeled Police Ogre. That's the Police Ogre. He's got eyes all the way around his head. Never sleeps. Doesn't take bribes and is invincible in combat. Can we blow him up? <laughs> no, we can't blow him up. We need to find a way around him. Well, I'm out of ideas. Yo, Winger, we've got you in this heist if you can solve this ogre problem for us. Luckily, you're a heist mastermind. Before Damien O'Hara can react to you. <laughs> <laughs> Out the bank yourself and split the money with Vera. Eat the pickle. Eat the pickle. Quick supply, she snatched the pickle off the table and bite it in half. Yes, success. Suck it over. That doesn't actually solve the look, Vera. Now the parts of the vault is clear. We can blow it open and walk out with the cash. But the ogre is still there. The map doesn't lie, Vera. I see no ogre. Fine, why don't you two just rob the bank then? I'll focus on my illegal drug trade. You'll have your share of romantic eyes with Damien. Together you eat the actual ogre just like you ate the pickle. And everyone knows police ogres are the ultimate aphrodisiac. What is with this bonus? It's amusing. Uh, I think class. Let's get this class. That day you listen to your elders and learn valuable lessons. Sometimes after all the monster nonsense and the dating gimmicks, you forget that attending class is supposed to be the primary activity at this high school. You gain two smarts. Pop with your class, you break up into groups. You notice Damien by himself at the desk, thinking hard. Damien, thinking hard, in class? You ask him what's up. It's just a stupid writing assignment. I'm supposed to write two pages on the destructive tool that's better than fire. Better than fire? What's better than fire? Fire's my thing, my whole brand. I swear, Miss Dina says got it in for me. What am I supposed to write about? You never thought you'd see the day when Damien would ask your advice about destructive tools. But you've been preparing nonetheless, you tell him. More fire. Sarcasm. More fire. 
Of course, more is always better, like with capitalism or carnage. It seems like the answer to my problems is inside me all along. Inside me is where I keep all my fire. In fact, why worry the people when I can set fire to the people instead? <laughs> yes! Damien engulfs the entire classroom in flames, just like every other week. This time, though, there's more flames. You're not sure whether Miss Demon Slayer will accept this as an answer, but it hardly matters. Her great book has already been burned to ash. He gained two fun and one bonus. Nice. <laughs> Hmm, where to go? Jim, we can't. So it's gonna make some money. I should have gone for creativity. Hey, they keep I found your profile. Let's chat. <laughs> that day you spent some time on the library's PC, sending malicious farm emails in the hopes of stealing other people's money. It doesn't sound very nice, but who's really the one to blame if they respond to a blatant scam? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see Damien about to punch them new when suddenly a dimensional portal opens between the two of them. Hey, what the hell? I was about to punch that new. There will be plenty of noobs to punch my face on Paramore when you are mine. What? I have traveled across time and space to find a fit commander for my armies and for my bedroom. Oh, you want me to come over to the kingdom so we can kill people and fuck? I wouldn't put it quite so crassly. Well, I would, and that sounds doper than hell, which isn't hard because hell is lame, but still. But if Damien goes to another dimension to fucking kill people, how will he fucking kill people with you? There's only one thing to do. Defeat the princess's entire shitty army using nothing but a clown and a grapefruit. Show Damien a prince shot the princess's armies. Bring clown shoes and assless shops. Defeat them all. <laughs> Armed with your trusty Kalanda helm and furious grapefruit, you charge through the rifts. The prince's army turns out to be just three dudes. And one of those dudes is just two toddlers in a trench coat. He strained the shit out of them, squeezed your fruit into the wounds, and thus was lost into a volcano. And what's more, he live streamed the entire thing for Damien to watch back home. When he get back, he's applauding. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, that was wicked! I've never seen someone be so gratuitous with a grapefruit. Screw this into the machine, I want you to teach me about using my limes as an offensive weapon. <laughs> the prince thinks back to his dimension to recruit a new shitty army. While you teach Jamie and the mysteries of citrus food, he gained two charm on one bonus. Nice. Uh, I need that. Sh Ooh, Polly. I arrive at my chosen table to find Damien dejectedly hunting a ball of mashed potatoes while Polly sadly passes her hair he through the scene. Seriously, what do we have to do to get a food fight started in this cafeteria? I honestly do not know. I try throwing potatoes at people and getting food fight. Yelling food fight. But I think everyone is too scared of me to fight back. And I can't throw any food because of my stupid ghost hands. Plates, mirrors, antique furniture, sure, but not food. There's gotta be a way to provoke a food or my dad's always telling me to be more political. But we're not political. Your strength is hidden things. And my strength is being unbelievably hot all the time. Unbelievably hot, that's it. We set the cafeteria on fire. Wait, no, that's not a solution. That's just awesome. 
<laughs> Why do I always jump straight to Austin? It's hard to watch them struggle through this by themselves. So you step in with an idea of your own. What was the fault of scarce resources? Seal everybody's food and put it in a pile. That ought to do it. Hey, Polly, you know how the Greeks fought a whole war with Helena Troy's fees? We just need you to get kidnapped by Trojans. Yeah, war is a fun thing. Whoa, is that what politics is? Beating people up and putting their stuff in a big pile? I didn't know I was already so good at politics. And then I can roll around in the food pile. It'll feel so good on my non skin. Damien spends the rest of lunch piling up everybody's food at an enormous food mountain. Hungry students are soon swimming the mountain trying to grab what they can while Damien pelts them with fire and knives from above. In his panic, the students turn to each other, fighting with the only weapon they have the food in their hands. Aha! Food fight! Food fight! I think a fight like this is how I died. The casualties are beyond counting, but no one will be forgetting that food fight anytime soon. Oh my god. Halfway there. Fun though, fun, fun, fun. That's my charm. Eh. Love creativity one more time. That day while rehearsing for the class play, you aren't especially good or inspired. For once, it seems like you aren't getting the creativity. Something, something, musical, something, something. Creativity. You're chilling out, not murdering anybody, when Damien stinks up to you. He's holding a large sack with the words definitely not a course written on it. <laughs> hey, um, you're not gonna believe this, but there's definitely actually a corpse in this bag. You never would have guessed. Now, here's the thing I'm not saying I'm exactly responsible for making this corpse. At least, not without my lawyer presence. But let's just see, he and I apparently did had very different definitions of rock, paper, scissors. Anyway, I'm not interested in going back to jail, so I need you to help me hide this body real quick. It would be an extremely attractive thing to do. Luckily, hiding dead bodies is kinda your thing. You share your brilliant solution. Disguise him as a drinking fountain. No one will know the difference. Just chuck him in my garage. He's blending perfectly with my collection of vintage dead bodies. Honestly? Oops. Huh. That's strange. That's strange. That was the most brilliant idea I've ever heard. But I'm not sure I have enough creativity to actually pull up on the skies. Why don't you do it? Of course. No one's more creative than you. You pull out your glitter glue sequins and pipe cleaners and really get to work. 14 hours later, your masterpiece is complete. It looks exactly like a... Uh, what are we trying to make again? This corpse looks like shit. What is that supposed to be? A pile of neon garbage covered in unicorn jizz? Also, why did you feel the need to be dazzled the woods? This is a dead body. Across the dead body. Get away from my dead body before I make you glitter glue your own corpse. Maybe you should stop coming to school in quite so many shrooms. You lose too small someone charm. Which isn't that bad. I can live. Um. Yeah. Let's go to smarts. That day the teacher is just tired of teaching, so she refers to the classic technique of not giving a shit. I'm putting on some kind of historical TV show for you guys to watch. What you don't expect is that it's super effective. God bless this golden era of television. The TV show is compelling thanks to the ridiculous amount of nudity and bloodshed. But at the same time, you actually learn a lot about history. You gain two smarts. Nice. Ah, the sounds of learning. Chalk on a blackboard. Pencils on paper. An ominous crash. It would seem that Damien and Vera have knocked over several desks in a rush to get to one particular seat. 
Listen, Saint Sabrina, don't you even dare think about it. Back off, Prince Stone Bread. I will turn you into stone before you can snap your oddly well manicured fingers. What makes you think you're worthy of sitting in the ultimate cool seat? I can get more likes posting a picture of me flipping you off than you get on a full front of nude. Ha, clearly, you've never seen my nudes. Ever heard of Demon Douche Bro Sexing? Dot com. Well then, if my sex and internet famous, I'm obviously the fucking coolest. You think being really cool on the internet makes you cooler than the de than being on King Mino's list of wealthiest human hybrids under 300 years old? Okay. This could go on forever. Better set that for them. Let's fucking take the seat to stop before either of them can stop you. Call down an unholy storm for an right to obliterate the seat. Damien and Vera look at you in awe. It seems a new champion of coolness has been selected. It can't be. It is. The seat never lies. It's winning. You feel a change come over you. Your skin is glowing. Your blog is trending. And you're suddenly wearing three additional pairs of sunglasses. I bow to your lit monster snapchat skills and on fleek outfit. Do you want to lend your impeccable fashion sense to my? No, 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 please join me for a night of punching and dominoes. Your social calendar suddenly filled up. You hope they don't mind if you stay seated for all the festivities. You gain two charm and one fun. When you reach Liam and Damien's table, you find it absent of food, but covered in paperwork. Do we really need all these special forms? Can't we just write that threats on regular people? For the last time, Damien, substantive change within the administrative system requires mastery of the mechanisms of bureaucracy. Uh, what if we wrote the death threats on really fancy people? Liam turns to address you. As you can see, my mastery of rural politics has caused me to embrace an unlikely ally in my quest for, re for reform. I have no idea what he's saying. I just want the cafeteria food to be stop being so fucking boring. You see, our interests are aligned. I too desire a menu less pedestrian. Sure. Either way, we're stuck upon the last bit. We know we want to change the menu. But we don't know what to change it to. Yes, we have indeed encountered a culinary block. Perhaps you can suggest something appropriately artistic. A white plate with a single spray of parsley in the center. The essence of minimalism. A bowl of knives. The essence of knives. Now that's interesting. Hmm, nice. Seems a bit didactic. <laughs> you see how didactic it is when I'm stabbing faces with a bowl full of knives. You don't know what didactic means, do you? Nope. But I do know how funny it'll be to watch a bunch of nerds try and finish a knife full. Damien's application to add knives to the menu is a success. He starts holding daily knife eating contests. There are no winners except Damien, who thinks it's hilarious, and you, who came up with this. <laughs> uh, what do I want? I want charm. That's it. That day an epic dodge or match takes place. The match is so intense that both teams are so into it that you decide to raise the stakes. By betting parts of your charm against parts of the other team leader's charm. That commitment amuses your whole team and their spirits is fueled by determination. Finally you win and take two charm from the other team's leader. She's now a bit less fabulous. You're minding your own business when Damien comes rushing through, punching everyone who's minding their own business. 
Fuck, I'm so angry. I'm so angry, I'm gonna put my own skull out and eat this. I'm so angry, I'm gonna set the school on fire and then punch the fire in his fucking face. I'm so angry, I wanna spend years of community and pillage skull capsules so I can become president and then use my nuclear clothes, clothes to blow up the sun. I knew you're standing in my way. Move before I punch you so hard. You remember you remember the men with melancholy, the times when you could move with all your bones hurting. Oh no, Vance ain't coming, think fast. Jokes on you, pal, I'm a pragmatist. I avoid any kind of idealization of the past because it has no use. Therefore, I refuse feeling any kind of melancholy. No time to think of anything clever. Start dancing for no reason. Just start dancing. <laughs> you have no idea what to do, so you just start doing a silly dance. It is really, really silly indeed. Before you realize, all your classmates are joining you in your silly little dance. <laughs> what the fuck? Move or I will kill you dead, noob. But Damien, you can't deny he's actually moving. <laughs> yeah, quite the moves he has. <laughs> hmm. Clearly, even Damien can fight against logic. Maybe you should move, Damien. Don't be a loser. Yeah, as you just said. Hey, you move or you die. <laughs> or your classmates start, dancing, start chanting. Move or die. Move or die. <laughs> ah... Damien, frustrated by the crazy, mindless, but joyful mob you created, finally leaves. Still from afar, you can see an eternal fire burning in the back of his eyes. But for now, you gain two bonus and one fun. Bruh. Damien is fun. Ooh, part of week six of the arts. What do I want to do? Let's check the shop. Good old man, what's it gonna be today? I don't know what you got. The gift that keeps on giving. High school social life is so hard nowadays that hiring a PR agent is socially a thing. So this should increase charm. This is just going to increase boldness. Oh, we can't get this thing in mass yet. I don't know what to do with this gift. Uh, these losses are fun. Creativity. Blood rituals. Hmm. What do I want? I know what I want. Screw it. I remember the first real shop club, no refunds. Boy. Why did I get this? I have no idea. Ooh. We're almost done. What are you doing? You mess with me and then try to sit at my table? Go away and get ready to die, fuckhead. He is eating the corner in silence. Will he die soon? Who knows? Meanwhile, nothing else happens. And if you think this is unfair, Next time, don't try to sit at the table of a person who just expresses the desire to murder you. Totally not a smart move. Well, this is unfortunate. 
Can't do anything about it. Uh a day he spent some time in the library's PCs, marging a start kicker. He deceived lots of people with a sensationalist video and impossible promises. Nice. He gained a hundred thousand money. But almost everything goes to cover costs and you need to keep too many. Despite everything else happening around you, you're just solving some stokus. But your mind is constantly going back to Damien. Stupid sexy Damien has idiotic short temper. You think he could even be your sweetheart, but he seems to more focused on being angry 24-7. For God's sake, he's the kind of guy who can get angry at a banana. As a matter of fact, your daydreaming is interrupted by the feral screams of Damien, who seems to be insulting an actual banana. You stupid yellow fruit, what's your deal? You think you're richer in potassium than me? No one is richer, richer in potassium than Damien fucking Levy. God. Is he even for real? Stupid sexy Damien. No, you need to put a stop to this nonsense before it escalates somehow to us and Eat the fucking banana. Defend the banana zona or eat the banana. I eat the banana. You get closest to Damien in a very cool and quiet way. Huh? Why don't you mind your own business, Nuru? But you don't mind your own business. You eat the banana instead. What? Gah. Ooh, look at Damien. He's losing his shit again. Yeah, he was bullying that banana, but it seems he's all bark and no bite. Not like Winger, huh? Indeed, Winger seems to be all bite for sure. Kinda sexy. It is alluring, being all bite, not the bullying. Bullying is, ne bullying is never alluring, nor sexy. True that, unless you're bullying a banana. I mean, who cares? That's just stupid. The mean is stupid. Hashtag when it's some when it's some bully bananas, they just eat them. Hashtag Damien is a stupid banana bully. Oh my god. Yeah, not again. This is it. This is the last time you dare fuck with me, you bastard. On prom night we're gonna share a very special dance. Spoiler alert, it will hit. Ooh, there's a prom fight and prom night. Damien vs Winger. Instant classic. Interesting. I might attend. Damn right. You all have to kiss to watch how I reduce Winger's bones into a sad shapeless pole. Yes, free tickets. Hashtag prom fights on prom night. And so you led yourself to your own potential deaths. Nice. At least you gain three bonus to doing so of your own volition. We have 25 freaking bonus. Bro, <laughs> as Damien, yes. You finally pluck up your courage and ask your beloved to go to monster prom with you. Prom? Burning stuff and committing murder might be badass, but nothing is as badass as following your heart and being believing unapologetically in love. Let's do this. Let's live our lives with zero regrets. From him, you. <laughs> oh my god, I did it. <laughs> Prom night was crazy intense. At one point, a classmate of yours criticized how Damien is always getting into fist fights. I wish Damien punched him, starting yet another fist fight. He joined in and fought by with him to the back. He joined in and fought with him back to back. Oh my god. <laughs> this it was a super sexy choreographed fight, and you even exchanged trusting glances while watching over each other's box. And that wasn't the only time that night you took care of Damien's rear, I think. Oh my god. <laughs> That's interesting. Okay. Well, <laughs> we're the best at high fiving. And Damien is best at giving fierce makeovers. That was interesting to say the least. I don't know where all the energy for the fight went. It just disappeared. 
For six weeks for me, we the most epic and absurd weeks of our lives. After the monster prom, we kept living our lives, falling in love, battling for friendship, and learning about who we were and who we could be. And you know what? Like it always does, life happened. And it was wonderful. Damien became an interior designer specializing in torture machines. Last month, Vogue magazine called his products to refine marriage between macabre and chic. Vera kept being fierce, strong, and stunning. Some haters once said adult life would put that mean bitch in her place, but you know what? Vera ended up making adult life her own bitch. Holly's drug cooking skills proved useful, and she became a chemist for a pharmaceutical industry. But in her free time, she still cooks the real shit. Her greatest invention so far was a flavor with ecstasy and a thing called a stove. <laughs> For those six weeks, the monster prom seemed larger than life, and then it was gone, just like that. The battle of a monster prom might have ended then, but there were plenty of battles left in that war called youth. But once again, we were young and unafraid, and we were ready to start. Oh, yes, here we go again. If the world was gonna end and you had 50 minutes to spend with me or a friend Would you take the first bus over to my house? Would you take the last plane over the west coast? See us times like these with the change of heart and you Still we're in time and for you had a son and it's not in your head and I wind up dead singing Sha la 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 Because of course just singing this to myself is easy to recover it, right? But if was first he had dancing to the flowers these students of fire started happening all around would you believe me and come on and take back and let it know we can't jump to you just by myself? Alright. Yeah, what if I told you that the world was gonna end And you had 15 minutes to spend with me or a friend Would you say don't even need to raise the phone I don't need no answer, I'm just spending it all alone I'm ready to experiment with you Ooh, that's nice Uh, I unlocked the the images in the gallery. Oh yeah. What do we get? What do we get? What do we get? Where's my mouse? Ooh, we got a new ending. Oh yeah. Sorry, variation. Anyone that goes to prom with the man. What kind of look at that? Nice. Is that all for endings? Yep. Okay. Polaroids. I suppose you only got the one Polaroid. Ooh, here it is. I'm ready to experiment with you. That smile. Look at that. Look at this. It's beautiful. Alright, Mart. What's over here? What do we find? What do we get? Probably got more constant lot. Did we? Ah, uh, we did. It was just being laggy. Amira's art got event concepts. Ah, uh, yeah, Amira's flame head. Holy <laughs> day out knock up. Oh my god. That's pretty cool. And then we got some fun out to brand it up. Ooh. Ah, Sarah went on Twitter. What is this right here? That's pretty cool. Someone's gonna die of fun. 
All right, nice. I love this. I love this game so much. Like, I hope you guys can appreciate how fun this game is. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this game. At least some of you did. <laughs> I wouldn't feel bad, but like, it's such a fun game to me. Oh. Oh. My fortune. Again, that's my whole job. Alright. It's half two in the morning. I think two runs is enough to do what must is wrong at the time. How you guys doing? Are you all ready to call it an evening? A night? Mirth, are you alive? Yeah, there's, there's a good chance my mom died. Which is unfortunate. 